Hello everybody, welcome back. First of all, a bit of acknowledgements. Uh, this screencast is based on a question by Antonio Sovoldi on the quantum mailing list. So, thanks uh, to Antonio. What was the problem? Well, he had found a puzzling behavior in uh, one of the functions provided by, by Quantly, namely the function used to calculate the duration of a bond. Let's see what uh, happened. Let's say we have a floating rate bond. So we instantiate a forecast curve. In this case, we set it at uh, a flat rate of 0.2%. And based on this curve, we create an Euribor six month instance. We also add a past fixing since uh, it's the fixing of the first uh, coupon, which is uh, ongoing. Then we instantiate the bond issue date, maturity date, it's in, in five years and it started a few months ago, let's say a couple of months ago. Based on those dates we instantiate the schedule, seminal period and finally the bond. Based on the forecast curve, we are able to calculate the cash flows and their date, of course, and here they are. So they're all about 0 0.1 as expected, so because the rate was 0 0.2 on semi annual coupons. Problem is, if we try to use the bond function duration function provided by the library and uh, we pass it a yield equal to the 0.2 rate of the used for the floating rate coupons, what we get is 4.8, which is about the time to maturity, which is not expected for a floating rate bond. We should get the time to next coupon instead. What happened? Well, problem is that this duration function is uh, too generic for its own good works on uh, uh, any vector of cash flows, uh, but for this same reason it can't uh, examine each cash flow and see what needs to be changed. Let me explain. Well, it calculates the duration as uh, the, the derivative you see in the formula, but all it can do is modify the yield used for discounting and it, it can't modify any other curve used by, by the coupons. To explain, the bond price is calculated as follows. Let's take this yield curve which we'll use for discount. What the, the, the pricing engine for the bond does is to calculate the dates for the bond, the cash flow corresponding amounts. It calculates the discount at each of the coupon dates and then just multiplies each of the cash flows by the discount and sum all of them. The price we get is something like this. So this is a sketch of the calculation but we can see that it matches the one done by the engine because we get the same result if we just set a discounting bond engine with this same curve and ask for the price. The calculation of uh, the duration, this derivative, is approximated in this way. Well, basically, we perturb the yield by a small bit. In this case, it's one-tenth of basis point. So, we set the yield a new value. Again, we calculate the amount, the discounts, and whatever. Well, I'm actually asking the bond to calculate the price, but I'm collecting this information for for showing, showing it later. So we get the price of the bond when the yield increases by a bit and the price of the bond when the yield decreases a bit. And we get this price for the first case, this, case, this price for the second. At this point we just calculate the derivative numerically and we get the same result for 0.86 that we got in this case. So we reproduced the problem and which problem it is. Well, the 
The problem is when we did this, we modified the yield curve that we used for this counting, but we didn't modify the curve which is set to the index for forecasting. So what happens if we look at the data we collected is that when the yield changes, the discounts change, but the amount of the coupons don't. So this is not really the duration of the floating rate bond. This is like, uh, well, it's as if uh, this bond wasn't a floating rate bond. It's as if this bond were a, a fixed rate bond whose coupons just happen to equal the amount of the floating rate bond. So what's the solution in this case? Well, uh, unfortunately, there's no solution for the, the, the duration function itself, so because, well, there's no way to, for, for it to inspect the coupons, and uh, uh, even if it could, it couldn't just change the curve set to the coupon, because who, who knows if anybody else is observing the curve and uh, doing anything in response to any changes. So it's up to client code, so to, 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 to us, to repeat the calculation, setting up everything correctly. So what we do is we also link the forecast curve to the yield curve. And at this point, we repeat the calculation. So we calculate the price of the bond for in the in the reference case well i see now as i record this that from a previous version i left the clean price here but it doesn't make any any difference actually i mean it makes a bit of difference but not but not uh, qualitatively the argument still stands so we calculated the price at uh, in the reference case and then again we modify the yield up and down and we calculate the prices in these two cases. As before we also collect information on the cash flows and the discounts. Okay so the price changed but uh, if you remember what happened in the previous case you can see that the price changed a lot less. It was the third digit here. We're talking about the fourth digit here instead and that's because in this case also not only the discounts but also the coupons change with the yield you can see that and this balances the change in discount well except for the first coupon of course because this one is already fixed it started two months ago and the fixing is, is determined so the duration is calculated correctly. So this is the three or four months that are that, sorry the four months that are left to the to the end of the first coupon. So we have to set up the the bond ourselves. A bit of uh, extra uh, extra content this also works if the discounting curve is not exactly the same as the first forecast curve but is, uh, is dependent on it. For instance we could use as the discount curve the forecast curve plus some kind of spread, a credit spread for instance. So we can set the pricing engine to one that uses this spread and discount curve for well the for discount. In this setup I didn't change anything else so the coupons remain linked to the forecast curve so we are using, we are using this one for uh, forecast the spreaded one for discount and we are still driving the forecast curve through the, this yield value in this case respect, with respect to the previous 100 basically the price decreases of course because we added uh, an additional discount component the amount of the coupons are still the same because uh, the forecast curve didn't change and if we calculate the price derivative as before 
we are still getting a duration which is well a bit different because of the added credit but uh, still is in the ballpark of the time to next coupon okay this is all for this time well thanks for listening and uh, see you